Hi, everybody. Welcome to the Cairo Pulse podcast brought to you by Cats Consultants. Thanks for tuning in today. Cairo Pulse is always helping chiropractors keep their pulse on success. I'm Dr. Michael Perush, and I'm joined by my good friend, Dr. Troy Fox. Good morning, Troy. Morning. How you doing? Fantastic. What's our topic today? I know you get all the emails. I do, and I've got a couple of good ones to pick from, so I'm going to pick one of these two here. Um, let's go with Brooke from Oklahoma. She she had a really interesting question, and this is this is going to open Pandora's box, so I'm going to have to keep an eye on the time, or we'll be here all morning answering this I like question. These. But so so she wants to know how do I decide what techniques to market in my practice? Okay. And if I introduce a new technique in my practice to the community, how do I do it without being a hot mess? Her words, not mine, by the way. (laughs) Hot mess. I love it. How how do I introduce a new technique in my practice without being a hot mess? So two-step question. What techniques do I I tell the public that I do? And, And so I think she's saying, how do I get a competitive edge? And then... How do, how do I market a new technique in my practice without being a hot mess? So let's, let's tackle part one first. So how do you decide what <laughs> techniques to market in your practice? We're going to need a whole football team to tackle this one. We do. We do. Yeah. <laughs> this one's going to be like a bad piece of meat. The more we chew it, the bigger it's going to get. That now, is Brooke, true. Brooke, thank you. Um, I, and I assume it's Dr. Brooke. So thank you for mm-hmm. uh, sending the question. It's a great question. And I've got a lot of different thoughts here. My, my first thought is, you know, when, when we're talking about technique, um, I assume we're talking about one of two things, either an adjusting technique like diversified, for example, or a therapy technique, like maybe you bought a new traction table or something and how do I market that? So I think we can approach this a couple of different ways. Um, <clears throat> I, I would always caution anybody to be careful about labeling your practice as being technique specific. I think it's always good to offer multiple techniques. And of course, we've all learned multiple techniques in school and over the years. And we've all taken those techniques and kind of turned them into our own, basically our our own idea of what that technique is. You know, Mm -hmm. I know uh, in my practice, I call it Perushivator because you know, I, I use the activator a lot, but, uh, you know, I use my own style and everybody does. So, um, so I think you want to be a little careful about labeling your practice as a specific technique. And, and for example, um, <clears throat> if you label your practice as being Gonstead p- specific, which is a great technique, don't get me wrong. I'm not downplaying the technique by any stretch of the imagination, But if you label your practice that way, and let's say you have a shoulder injury and you can no longer do Gonstead because because of your shoulder injury, now you've got to change to a a, maybe a mechanical instrument technique like activator. And now you got to retrain all your patients. So, you know, I think you have to really focus your practice more on your outcomes and what you do for patients, because that's really what patients care about. That's what your community cares about. They care about the the, uh, the outcomes that you get for them, not so much of what your technique is or what your new therapeutic toy might be. Talk about how that helps patients. You, you get a new traction table. How does it help people? You get a new laser. How does that help people? Um, you know, talk in those terms. Yeah. So instead of basically us focusing on us, when we buy a new piece of equipment and you and I've <laughs> discussed this before, What happens is, is we get excited because we're like, hey, here's this really cool new piece of equipment or a cool new technique. Sometimes it's not a shiny lure. Sometimes it's actually a new technique that's going to help your patients. And you're so excited to do it. And immediately once you make that purchase of the training or the equipment, you start thinking, how do I pay for this? And so then it becomes about you. How how do I take care of me? And what we really should do is think about what we initially thought about when the excitement came upon us through the technique was how do I help my patients with this? Right. And so that's what we need to focus on. And I agree with you from a standpoint of if, if we market our technique as the next best thing since sliced bread and we injure ourselves or we just get older and naturally we go, you know, I need to move to a more mechanized technique Uh, to treat my patients, but I've told my patients that Gonstead is the only way that you can adjust someone 
I have a lot of explaining to do at this point. <laughs> yes, you Lucy, know, you do. <laughs> yeah. And, and it, and it doesn't work out very well that way. So that's the danger of being technique specific, right? But promoting what helps patients, like you said, I think is very helpful. So we need to take the focus off of us, put it back on the patient, in my opinion. Yeah. And I, I think that's absolutely correct. And I think we need to get our mindset right when we're going to add a technique um, into our practice as well. And, and we hear this all the time. <clears throat> I want to make more money. I want my, I want my clinic to make more money. So mm -hmm. therefore I'm going to start decompression. I'm going to go out and buy a decompression table, wrong mm -hmm. mindset, right? Turn the mindset around to the patient, turn the mindset on the patient uh, towards the patient in the sense of, Hey, if I bring in a traction table, I see a lot of low back issues, a lot of disc issues. If I bring in a, a traction table, how many of my patients can I help? How much better will my outcomes be for my patients? Right. The money will take care of itself. It and will. And for, first you, questions first, as we look at yeah. that too, is can I afford this piece of equipment? So we right. may need to make some other changes in our practice to make it fiscally responsible for us to buy that table. We see so many yep. docs that want to chase the next thing because they want to have another feather in their hat and add that new piece of equipment. And sometimes it's inappropriate at the time. And that's why we follow our docs statistically. And we do it for a reason because we want to know when you call with that question and we want you to call us before you do that. Are you ready? Because somebody right. sometimes <clears throat> I know in my practice, somebody had to be the sane one because I was not, <laughs> yeah, you know, I was the, Hey, let's buy this. This will be really cool. I can't wait. You know, I, I, I look like, you know, somebody that, it, you know, I look like Jack Nicholson from, uh, you know, in the shining, you know, I, I was so excited about this new piece of equipment and my staff would be like, but doc, we just bought three new things last month. Don't you think we ought to probably work with patients on those? You know, so sometimes it's, sometimes it's a timing issue. Sometimes it's a money issue, but oh my gosh. So yeah, yeah, and you bring up you bring up a great point about the money side. <clears throat> yeah, and here's here's what I think a lot of doctors miss. You go chasing after the shiny thing because you think it's going to bring in more profit. You don't think mm -hmm. about how you're going to help patients with it, or how many patients you have that would be able to utilize <clears throat> mm -hmm. that therapy or technique or whatever it might be. And here's here's the other coupled thing that you have to think about. They don't think about how profitable they are. And therefore they get into a situation where they really couldn't afford that piece of equipment right. to begin with. And it just starts taking them down even deeper. Right. And, and we see that all the time. And we, we oftentimes are helping doctors dig out of those holes um, because of those mistakes that you made. You have to be profitable before right. you add the next piece of equipment. We are like a hospital at times. I mean, from, <laughs> from a, from a practice advisement standpoint, People go, well, I, I don't need practice advisement. I'll do this on my own. And then okay. they try to do it on their own. And then things go not so great. And then they make a few more poor decisions. Right. And not everyone does it this way, but but the, the worst ones are the ones that do that, then make some more poor decisions. And then they, they have a friend who knows us and they talk to us and then they go, Oh, you know, I, I, I don't really have the extra money to spend on that right now. And, and, and then they still don't get any advisement or help. <laughs> They're still going down the wrong path. And eventually they get to a point where it becomes critical. And I don't know how many times we've heard this when we've talked to doctors. I have about, I have enough money to last about 90 more days and I'm in a lot of trouble right now. Yep. And I don't know what to do. And, and we're like, okay, show us everything you got. And we help people out of those situations, but waiting until you've got 90 days left is at that point, probably a 50, 50 coin flip, yeah, you know, pretty much. whether okay. you're going to survive it or not, even with our help, um, because there's a lot you have to change. And if you do things like buy a bunch of expensive equipment that you have notes on that you can't pay back. Ooh. So, well, yeah. Hey, I, I tell you what, we need to probably discuss this other, the hot mess thing. The hot mess thing. Yeah. yeah. So how, <clears throat> how do I introduce, that's the other question we need to talk about today. So you did go ahead and buy this new piece of equipment. Okay. Now you got a note to pay, or you paid a bunch of money for, uh, you know, for a taping class or a, a, a STEM tool class or, you know, something like that. 
I paid all this money. I've got all this stuff. How do I introduce this thing to my community without being a hot mess? And I mean, when we say hot mess, I'm guessing poor delivery to, to the public, you, you know, that sort of thing. How, how do I do it in a way that's actually going to generate interest? And the other thing that I see that I want you to address is I want to introduce this, but I just paid a whole bunch of money to do this, but I want to give it away for free for the first month <sighs> to get people's interest. So tell me we what just you eliminate think about that, that word. Can we just eliminate that word from the dictionary? <laughs> <laughs> um, <clears throat> Well, number one, if you're paying for it, which you are, unless, you know, the chiropractor down the street closed and just out of good nature gave it to you, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Um, <clears throat> you, you can't give it away, period. End of story. Um, right. On to the next podcast. Um, yeah. You that can't was give quick it away. and easy. <clears throat> Excuse me. So you have to think about what did I pay for it? How many patients can I put on it? You know, for example, if it's a decompression uh, table, Um, you know, you can, in theory, probably only utilize it on about three patients an hour, Mm -hmm. which is fine. That's neither good or bad, but that plays into where you've got to price it and can patients afford it? Or can you explain the value of it well enough to get patients interested? The other thing you have to do is you have to really listen to patients because that therapy, that technique is going to start with your current patients. Mm -hmm. You're Mm -hmm. not going to market it out in the community until you get your patients started on it. Why is that? Because that's an immediate reward for your practice. Number one, plus Mm -hmm. your patients already have a level of trust with you and they're going to go out and tell people about it. Right. So, Hey, that's, that's called internal marketing. uh, Yeah. I've heard of that. Yeah. Yeah. So that's yeah, so, the first thing we do is internal marketing. I like that. Okay. Yeah, so listen to your patients, find those opportunities to offer it as an add on to their current treatment plan and get mm-hmm, them started on it. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Now, from a price standpoint, and I want to throw this out here, here's a really easy way to price this thing. And I, and, and it works really well. So I'm just going to give you an example. Let's say your note on your decompression machines, $500 a month. Okay. Mm-hmm. And let's say, let's just say your practice is open 10 days a month. Okay. So I'm just throwing numbers out there so we can make this round and easy. So I owe 500. I'm open 10 days a month. We can do the easy math. My bare minimum is I need to make $50 a day when I'm open. Right. Right. So anything above that becomes profit. So you, you have to understand that margin, know how much you owe on it, know how many days you're open and know how many patients you need to see at whatever price you've set. So if you set a price of $10 per patient to do decompression, please don't. (laughs) But if you do do that, you have to see five patients every single day on decompression just to break even. So you need to determine from a pricing standpoint, how you're going to price that decompression. Now, if you price it at $250 a session, because you're like, I'm greedy and I want to make a bunch of money, you may end up with zero patients on that day and you still owe all the notes. So you have to find the happy medium, especially if you're going to do this for yep. cash, which a lot of people do. Um, they're going hey, to you do- find that sweet spot. You got to find that sweet spot, but you got to know that that sweet spot's still going to generate profit after so many patients or after, in my example, after one patient a day, anything over one, I'm making money and that's a good thing. So, yeah. Okay. Back to the marketing side. We internally marketed it. So we've got one or two patients, let's say that are interested and are going to do it. Hopefully you have more than that, but let's say we got our one or two. So mm-hmm. we're already generating a profit. Now, what do we do next? I know our patients, we can encourage them internally again to tell their friends and family about it. Then what else do we do? Yeah. And I always suggest just to piggyback on that. I always suggest that <clears throat> when you buy something, think about how many current patients you could get on it. Cause you want your current patients. Again, it's the low hanging fruit. You want the right. current patients to actually be paying for the, for the piece of equipment. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Then you go out and market it externally. And personally, right. I think the best way to market it um, externally is doing um, social media videos. Actually show people what it is and how it works. 
in a video and post that on Facebook and, and uh, Instagram and oh, put it I on your blog, like, on your website. What's but I that? don't like Facebook, Doc. I don't like doing live videos. We hear that. And I'm like, <clears throat> well, you know what? Um, I guess you could not do it and be, you know, moderately <laughs> to poorly uh, successful. That's poorly successful. Moderately <laughs> to not so whatever. Not successful. <laughs> not successful. But our folks in practice that are wildly successful do things that sometimes aren't comfortable. And they also do things that attract a lot of attention from the public in a very good way. And that's, that's a really, it, that's the easiest way to explain why yeah. social media works as good as it does. It causes a buzz in your community. Exactly. Yeah. If you're not pushing yourself out of your comfort zone once in a while, like getting on <clears throat> Facebook and, and doing a live video, then you're, you're never going to reach the pinnacle of success. And yeah. I don't care what motivation speech or book you read or hear. Everybody talks about, you got to push yourself out of your comfort zone. That's how yeah. you grow. That's how you get successful. Yeah. You know, and back we, in the, back in the days oh, when yeah. we used to do spinal screenings, <clears throat> um, we never coached people to go where the people aren't. We mm -hmm. coached doctors to go, go find the biggest events you can like the RV show and the home show and those kind of things. But it's not enough just to show up. You got to make a splash. And that's what, that's what social media videos allow you to yeah. do. And it's, it's cheap. It's easy. You do it right there in your office. You don't have to leave the office. I mean, social media couldn't have made marketing more easy. No, it's way better than going to the Amico gas station and standing there in between the pumps. We know somebody that actually did this. He was going outside of his comfort zone, and that was his whole point was to stretch himself. He'd already done spinal screenings like the rest of us, and then he said, right. I'm going to go one step beyond. So he asked this gas station, a very busy gas station, if he could walk around the gas station with his, with his dry spine hanging over his shoulder and talk to people about <laughs> chiropractic, I you know, it. and it may sound cheesy and crazy, but he did it. And, you know, there were probably some people that thought this guy's nuts. And there were probably maybe a few people that actually went, you know what, I'm in needing to see a chiropractor. And, and, and I don't know that his, his impetus was actually to get new patients. I think his impetus was to stretch himself outside his limits. So he felt comfortable in any situation, but sometimes when we, when we go on social media and you go, oh, I don't like to do those live videos. Oh, come on, pull on your big boy or your big girl pants <laughs> and make a video. It's yeah, it's uncomfortable the first time or two. And you look at yourself and you're like, I think I have a wrinkle right there on my forehead. You know, you see, you see yourself and, it, and then you go, oh, I guess that's how people actually see me every day. So whatever, you yeah, know, whatever. so you do your thing. So that's, that's really, I mean, so those are the keys internally market, which I think is great. Yep. And you said low hanging fruit, but, and we mean that in the nicest way. I mean, we have wonderful yeah. patients, but what we're saying is, is go easy first. In other words, there are patients that would love to and need to utilize this new service like decompression, allow them to utilize it first. And guess what? That alone is going to pay for it. So there's, there's number one, internally yep. market, allow your patients to begin the external marketing campaign. Then you go on social media, whether that's Instagram, Facebook, those are the two biggest ones. I mean, those are probably, you know, and here's the other thing. Right. If you can do a brown bag launch or you can get in with the Kiwanis club or something like that, or if you're, you know, already that's with the Kiwanis club and yeah. you go in and talk with them about it. Hey, I got a new piece of equipment. I'd love to show you guys, you know, just a low key demonstration on what it does. I don't think you really have to hype up decompression <laughs> or a lot of other techniques. I think anymore, if you just teach people what it is and how effective it is and you turn it back to them you win yeah. every time every time so that every time and that, that will keep you from being a hot mess yeah that brook is how you do it and you do it very easily and so i'm thinking from that standpoint we probably <laughs> just taught a lot of people how to step out of their comfort zone just a little bit how to market that new technique you may have a technique in your practice right now that nobody even knows that you have they don't even know that it exists or you exist. Get on Facebook, do some lives, get yourself out there. I know some doctors that don't even know themselves what they have in their clinic. Well, that's true. Because <laughs> they bought true. something a long time ago and they didn't, 
they, they made it a hot mess and they didn't utilize it. Yeah. Now it's sitting in a closet somewhere. So, you know, I do love doctors like that though, because then when I put on message boards, Hey, does somebody have blah, blah, blah. Somebody will message me and go, got one brand new in the box or barely used used used. four (laughs) times. And I'm like, yes, it's like going to a garage sale at that point, because then I'm like, I want and need that piece of equipment. And they're like, yep, never used it. And I'm like, fantastic. Perfect. I'll bring my check that. Book. Thanks for yeah, the 50% my discount. <laughs> exactly. Uh, All right. It. Well, that Brooke, that was a great question. Thank you for sending that in. And uh, Troy, I appreciate you uh, bringing that one to the top of the list this week. Yeah. So, hey, tell them how they can get a hold of us because, uh, you know, we <clears throat> sound like we sound like we know what we're doing. <laughs> so, so from a practice advisement standpoint, if we can help you, let us help you. So how do and they we get a hold a lot of us? doctors? Yeah. You can get a hold of us really easy, catsconsultants.com. Go to the website. You can find our phone number. You can jump on our calendars and schedule a, uh, a breakthrough session where we just sit and talk. What's happening with your practice and how can we help you? Um, you can also join us on Facebook at Cats Chiropractic Consultants and our KC Chiropults uh, Facebook page as well, where we post a lot of uh, great nuggets of information to help you with your practice. So, And if you have a question, you can get a hold of me. Troy at cats, K A T S consultants.com. Troy at cats consultants.com. Ask me anything. We'll, we'll, we'll use your question and we'll answer it to the best of our ability. Absolutely. We'll, we enjoy talking to docs all over the country. So, all right, everybody. Thanks for tuning in to the KC Chiropults podcast brought to you by cats consultants, helping you stay inside your comfort zone, but stretching it as far as we can. So from all of us here at Cats Consultants, stay informed and well-adjusted.